We have had two different assignments that have been given to us and taken away before we've actually gotten our final one and now we're down to like a month. And this is not for me. <laughs> this was, this was, this was trash, but like in a good way. And again, having so much fun taking a test. <sighs> this is like the bane of my existence because this is just a testament to my capitalistic, materialistic, unfortunate <laughs> obsession addiction, problem, issue, whatever. You're not gonna get high fantasy, intricate plot, political intrigue. That's just not what this book is, but I don't think that it was trying to be that. Hey friends, how's it going? My name is Mariah and welcome to the start of a new reading vlog. Um, this isn't gonna be any type of like themed reading vlog. Honestly, it's just gonna be a weekly vlog, you coming along with me, me doing some reading and living life. It has been quite a bit of time since I filmed a vlog, really even filmed anything. Hopefully by the time you're seeing this, I've already gotten my quarterly wrap up and my April TBR posted. But honestly, life has just been very, very chaotic and it's kind of starting to slow down. I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And so I'm finally kind of in a place where I'm ready to hop back in and continue to regularly vlog, regularly film and post and all of that. It's just been, very chaotic. Um, we've just been going through illnesses the last few months. We've been traveling, but we're also preparing for a move in May. It is that time again. Army has said it is time to leave and head to your next spot. So we are doing that. And I'm also just in the state of like discontent with my job. And so I've made the decision to transition to a new avenue when I get to our next spot. So essentially, Right now, I teach online school. I've been teaching for the last almost 10 years, and for the last couple of years, I've been teaching online. Um, it's basically like an online homeschooling platform, so families that would like to homeschool for whatever reason, um, but they maybe don't have the means or um, like the background to educate their children, they can go through us, which is a accredited public school. The kids that go through us get the same um, accreditation that they would get going through an in-person public school. So we have lots of students that come to us for a variety of reasons, and I love those kids, but I'm just learning that I need to be in a classroom. I am happiest and most effective when I'm in a classroom. A lot of things that go into teaching, um, when you're teaching online, your hands are very tied, and it turns into a feeling of ineffectiveness. And I got into education because I love teaching. I love working with kids. I love impacting, and I love talking about nerdy science things. And a lot of those aspects have not been an opportunity for me in this platform. And in the way that I do it, my method of teaching is different than this proposed method that I've been doing the last few years. So I've been very unhappy and at this point it's affecting my mental health. So I've decided that when we move, I'm going to transition back into the classroom. I've loved this time being able to be with my kids and have more of a flexible schedule. And my son has been with me since he's been born. Um, but he has now transitioned to a um, Head Start program to kind of help with his speech delay. And so I just think that my kids are content being socialized with other kids in an educational setting and so it's time for me to do something for myself and for my professional career and my mental health and move back to the classroom. So I'm very excited about that. I just recently was hired for a school that I'm really excited to work with um, and so that was a great thing and I think that's just kind of like boosted my energy and it's given yeah. me some motivation in life. <laughs> And I know that sounds really terrible, but if you've ever struggled with something that you're so passionate about that's just not working out for you, it's really hard to keep doing that every single day. So I'm excited about that. Um, anyway, that was a long way of saying that I'm just kind of getting back into the groove. Everyone at the moment is healthy. Um, we have our plan to move. Um, if you are a military family, you understand what I'm talking about. We have had two different assignments that have been given to us and taken away before we've actually gotten our final one, and now we're down to like a month. Um, and usually you're supposed to get like an extended period of time so that you can prepare. And just like army fashion, they like to mess around and play a game with your mental sanity of oh, where are you going next. Um, but I'm very excited about the where we 
we are headed, it's actually going to be very close to family, like actually in the same town that I grew up in. Um, so that's very exciting. We haven't lived with family, near family, close to family in a very long time. So that's great. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and I'm just in a better mood and I'm ready to do some reading. I'm ready to do some filming and posting and interacting more with you guys because March was a low. Um, but I do have to hurry up and get out of here because, like I was saying, um, I still am teaching. I'm still doing my job. We still have to finish out the school year. And it is April, which means good old standardized testing time. So it is our um, window, our testing window this week. And so I have to go in person to proctor the testing because Students at this point cannot take the standardized test online. There's, they haven't figured out a secure way to do it. So um, I have to go in for a, a week in April to proctor that testing. So I actually need to head out like now. Um, but I wanted to start this vlog and let you know what I'm going to be reading in between. I can't actually be reading during the test, which is really frustrating. Like, heaven forbid you pick up a book to read while you're making sure these kids are taking the test but you know instead we're supposed to just pace around the room and give them more anxiety about this test and just watch them just I hate that but I should have breaks in between so I'm gonna bring my book with me um, I'm currently reading Shatter Me by Tahara Mafi um, I am a little more than halfway I'm on chapter 27 which is page 176 um, so I'm hoping to finish this today I just want to get it done, honestly. Right now, it's just okay. Um, I'm reading this because for my TBR game, I picked, like, choose a book talk favorite. And I don't really have a lot of book talk books. But I do feel like every time I see some type of, like, flash recommendation from book talk in particular, but also, like, on Instagram um, and even sometimes on BookTube, I see this series, Shatter Me. Um, which is a dystopian YA series, and I think there's like a ton of books, like maybe six or seven in it. Um, and this is the first one, and it's just okay right now. Um, we're following Juliet, who lives in this like dystopian society um, called the Reestablishment, and essentially, humans have done what we do, and they've destroyed basically the Earth. I think the ozone layer is like gone, and you know, so food is, animals are dying out, plants are dying out, food is scarce, like resources, people are struggling. And so this group called the reestablishment has promised society that they can fix things. They can bring us back to a healthy society. Um, but it's in a very sinister way. Um, Juliet is a 17 year old. I think she's 17. And when she's younger, she's discovered that, in a very traumatic way, that she has a power that is actually very deadly. Um, basically, if you touch her, you're done. So the reestablishment seized her and put her in a mental, mental institution. And she basically is just trying to deal with the fact that she herself sees herself as a monster and she's fatal and she's really scared of interacting with people and she comes in contact with Adam. He's another patient at this facility um, where they're just like putting the room together and things kind of just go from there. I feel like that's a really good pitch for this book. I feel like if you were to hear that it would be like oh wow like there's lots of depth to the story. Like Juliet has a lot that she's dealing with. And now we've got this like reestablishment that's doing these really crazy things that they promise one thing, but really they're like practicing eugenics and all of that stuff. But all of that is what I've just derived from maybe a page worth of information, in my opinion. I feel like I haven't been given much as far as the plot goes. And really, this is just starting to feel like a romance that's just happening in a dystopian setting. Um, so I'm wanting a little bit more out of this. I mean, I do like uh, the writing style. It feels very poetic, but in some cases it feels like it's trying a little too hard to be poetic. And um, we're basically being told this kind of like in Juliet's journal. So as she's journaling, um, she'll have moments where she says something and then like she'll strike through it almost kind of like redacting some of her stuff um which is interesting and like this one I really enjoyed like it's just repeating 
Um, I am not insane. And so it's just like showing her like mental, um, like her mental state at the moment. So I do like that. But we've got like two male characters right now. And I'm afraid it's going to be a love triangle. And I just don't like love triangles. They're not my favorite. Just like, listen, I want either this, either you to choose and not go through the love triangle or not choose and have both and everyone be okay with that. Like I either want a monogamous relationship or a why choose where everyone's good with it. So just, I just hope that's not where it's going. It kind of seems like that's where we're headed, but I just need more plot. I want to know more about this, this society. I want to know more about the reestablishment. Give me like a person to like, worry about you know like one of the one of the male characters seems to be in this reestablishment, but I'm very unclear about what his position is how much power he has because it kind of just sounds like a commander like not really like overarching like give me a president snow give me something else I need more plot here other than her just bonding over this boy but I also think that there's a little attraction to our villain you know um yeah, that's where I'm at. But I mean, like I said, I'm on chapter 27. I really need to get a bookmark. Um, so I do have quite a bit of story to go. So I'm going to switch over to the audiobook because I do have a little bit of a drive to my testing site. It's about like a 40 minute drive. So I can get a pretty good chunk taken out of this. Um, so let's go ahead and head out, put on that audiobook, and go stare at some kids taking a test for no reason. Um, I obviously forgot to update you guys yesterday because it just was a very exhausting day. After I got done checking in with you, I ran off to do um, testing and it took forever. And then when I got home, I was just exhausted and over it. Just done. Uh, there's just something about sitting for hours not being able to read. I mean, you really can't talk because you don't want to be disruptive. And just staring at walls, uh, that's exhausting. Like, it's just really exhausting. And I don't understand what that is. I don't know, maybe, like, for me, because my brain, it, it just, like, keeps going because I have nothing to distract myself and quiet my brain. Um, so I was just mentally exhausted after yesterday. So I got home and uh, Marcus grilled a bunch of delicious food so I didn't have to worry about dinner. So I just ate and hung out on the couch and did some crocheting um, and then went to bed. <laughs> I did some reading first um, in bed. So I guess I'll go ahead and update you with my reading progress. So I finished Shatter Me and <laughs> this is not for me. <laughs> Um, it was a no. It was just, it's just probably a note for me. Um, I ended up giving this two stars. I think that that's fair. I really do. Oh, hi. Good morning. I do think that that's fair. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I feel like it has potential. It has promise. So even though I've given it two stars, I'm not going to say that I won't continue with the series because it might be one of those that like, takes a little longer to develop and since it's a longer series maybe the writing and the planning gets better because that's really what it was for me um it was just like the plot holes or just like little things and I might be just being nitpicky but it was just like little things that I just I was like what what is happening what is happening right now? So far, I'm wrong in the sense of a love triangle, but I do think that that's going to happen later on in the series. If it's not going to be a love triangle, then our original love interest is not endgame. Um, then, <laughs> there was just like other things that I just did not like. Um, 
Okay, so Homegirl's been locked up for about three years. And, you know, you would think that you've been, like, starved. Um, you've been in the dark. You haven't spoken to anyone in over maybe almost a year. Um, you would think that when you got out, like, it would take a long time to, like, recuperate. And it does mention that, you know, she does kind of take it slow with food and she forgets to eat because she's not being fed. Like, she's not used to that, which was nice. But I think the fact that she, like, like, she's good. She's good to go. She's good to go is a little, um, fast. Also, I feel like if you've been locked up in the dark for an extended period of time and not getting to speak with anybody, there would be extreme mental trauma. And to me, that was not even discussed. It's like she met the love interest and he healed her in every way possible. That makes no sense. That makes no sense. Um, another thing. <laughs> I'm not trying to roast this book. I just feel like it needed more development. These children are growing up in a dystopian world and they're seeing terrible things, but yet they're still being written and like portrayed as very immature, like as if a healthy functioning 10 year old in today's society would, would behave. And that's just hard for me to believe. I think of other like dystopian novels or even movies or shows where the society is really tough and it's very brutal and kids are having unfortunately to mature faster than they typically would because of the situation they're in. Think of Hunger Games. Um, I think of like The Walking Dead. There's, there's children that are having to behave like adults because they have to survive. And in this situation, you would think if you don't have food, if you don't have resources, if you have to watch your back because there's this reestablishment that's coming after you, you would be a little more mature. You would be, you would make, you know, more mature decisions. You would be more cautious. Um, so that just was really weird to me. Um, what else? <laughs> There's just so much I could say about this. I've already been rambling for so long. Um, this just for me wasn't it. There's some other things that happen in this book that really didn't, I, I was like, what, what is happening right now? But I've already been talking for 15 minutes. I'll just say this. There was borderline assault and very clearly that uh, she was uncomfortable, but she had to push through for, you know, just to get out of the situation, which is completely understandable. But if that person comes back to be a love interest, I'm going to have a problem. Because that was assault. And that was not okay. That was not okay. Did not like that part of the book. Um, so anyway, I'm giving this a two. I'm not going to say that I won't pick up the second book. I might and see if it gets better, if the plot gets better, if our author does a little more thought puts a little more thought into the story. I might. I mean, they're short. They're quick to get through. Uh, this just wasn't it. This wasn't it for me. So uh, that kind of ended my day. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I need to pick up something that is not going to be too mentally taxing for myself because I'm still exhausted. And I want something that's just going to be entertaining. Nothing that I could think too much into. So I decided to pick up Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. This is a mafia romance. This is my first mafia romance. I picked this up a while ago. Um, and then I just stopped reading it because I got excited about some other things. And I put it down and then I picked it back up because I had to choose a book, an unfinished book for my TBR game. Uh, so I went ahead and I started over. And I'm currently only like a little chunk through. I'm on chapter seven, so page 54. Um, and you know what? It's it's giving what I was hoping for. It's giving what I was hoping for. Uh, I'm hoping the entertainment comes along, but I am not going to take this book too seriously. I am not going to dissect this thing. They're basically in dual families in Chicago. So Ada comes from an Italian mafia family, and Cullum comes from an Irish 
I mean, they're basically the mob as well, but they don't like to see themselves that way. Listen, we are going to be legitimate. Colm is trying to become, I think, the mayor of Chicago. Um, and so he's looking down, looking down on the gallows because they're still mafia. They're mobsters. They go back a long history, like with Prohibition um, and some of the illegal activities that were happening due to Prohibition. And then when alcohol became legal again, they both families kind of get into gambling and keeping books and all of this stuff. So basically, the two fathers of these families decide, you know what, enough is enough. We can benefit by coming together. So I'm at this point in the book. Um, that this isn't a spoiler, it's on the back, that the two fathers have arranged for Ada and Colum to marry, to basically unify these two families, and neither one of them are happy about it. Like I said, I'm not going to take this book too seriously, because I don't think it's meant to. I don't think it's meant to. I don't think that Sophie Lark is worried about writing a beautiful piece of literature. I think she's about writing some mafia smut. And that's what I'm here for. So I'm going to continue reading this today. I am not on the schedule for testing today, so I'm just going to be working on like grading and things like that today, but I also have some things that I want to get down done around the house since I have a little more time today, so I'm going to be focusing on that. So I just finished folding some laundry that I'm going to go put away, and then I need to do some editing uh, because I'm way behind on posting. So I'm going to do some editing do some grading. Um, I'm going to pick up the audio for this because I have stuff to do. Um, but eventually I'm going to sit down and continue reading. So the goal for today is to finish this book. And it's kind of nice outside, so I think I might take Luna on a walk as well. So let's put laundry away. Let's do a little bit of editing. Go for a walk and check in later. Hey guys, welcome back. So I just finished Brutal Prince. Is it sad that I kind of liked this? <laughs> this was, this was, this was trash, but like in a good way. Like I said, I was not going to take this book too seriously. I mean, I don't think it's trying to be serious. I think we're here for entertainment. We're here for smut, a slight plot, um, and that's what it delivered, and I'm okay with it. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 stars. Um, there's a few things. Like, it's marketed as mafia, and while both families are definitely, like, mafia-related, um, I wanted more out of that. Like, I wanted it to be a little more Sopranos. I wanted to see a little more of, like, Sons of Anarchy. Um, I wanted some more brutality. For him... For it to be called Brutal Prince, he's not that brutal. He's really not. I think there could have been more opportunities for him to be brutal. Um, anyway, I liked it. I thought it was entertaining. I thought the spice was good. In some, in some points, it was a little cringy, um, but I could see past that. It was a good time. This was just a nice palate cleanser, honestly, and that's what I was looking for. So three out of five stars. Um, I will probably continue on with the series. I think it's going to be one of those, like, it highlights a different character. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now. I don't really want to pick this up right now. I just actually realized that there's strawberries on the front of this, and that's kind of funny. Uh, if you read this book, you understand the strawberries, so. Huh, see what you did there. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be done with this for the moment. Um, and I want to start something different. Um, I've been doing laundry all day. I did a lot of crocheting. Um, I just finished uh, cleaning up downstairs, um, and then I, I need to vacuum. Uh, but then I want to just pick up something else, but I don't know, and I'm looking at my TBR, and nothing is, like, inspiring me to, like, want to read any of that right now. Um, and then, like, I took a look at, like, my shelves up there and the extra books and all of that. Nothing is, like, piquing my interest at the moment. I kind of want to pick up a thriller or, like, a mystery. Um, because when I was looking back at my quarterly wrap-up, I've only read one this year, and it was a dud. 
So I kind of want to pick up another one, but there's nothing that I have on my shelves that I want. Um, and I'm not willing to buy an audiobook. So I think I'm going to pull up Libby and see maybe what's available now. Um, because I do, I want to do some sewing. Um, I'm really trying to like relax today and I feel like in between laundry, I could do some sewing. I'm kind of, um, losing a little bit of that serotonin from my crochet project. So I did start, um, making a corset. I guess it was a couple weeks ago and then I got a little frustrated with the pattern and uh, gave up on it not gave up on it put it down for the moment but I kind of want to pick it up again and I think that that would be a fun activity to do while I listen to an audiobook so I'm gonna scroll on Libby for a moment try and decide what I'm going to pick up and then do some sewing and I'll check in with you in a little bit day um I don't even remember the last thing I updated you on I think I was sewing um and oh that's what it was I was trying to decide what I wanted to read next and I was going to do some sewing so I did a little bit of sewing got some progress done still need to kind of make some edits on that pattern it was Tuesday night last yeah. night so on Tuesdays I meet with my um I I keep calling it a book club I mean at this point we're all just like best friends um, unfortunately, because we are all associated with the military, at this point, majority of the group has moved away. So there's only three of us that are local still, and then the other four friends have moved away. So we're kind of spread out. So what we do now is just, like, have a group video chat. And so we do that on Tuesdays. And so after I was done sewing and took care of dinner, I got on with my besties, and it was the best time ever. I always look forward to it. It's ever, it's always just something that I personally need. Um, so I did that and we usually chat till pretty late at night. And so I was pretty tired afterward. I didn't really do much reading after that point. Uh, so I really didn't have any updates, but I will let you know what I decided to pick up on. So I was scrolling through Libby trying to see what was available and going through Libby, I realized, oh wait, I have some library books that are due like soon. Um, and my husband just finished reading one of them, um, and I originally got it for myself, and he's not a reader, uh, but he ended up reading it for himself and um, really, really enjoyed it, and so I was like, let me go ahead and pick that up, and that is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing, um, and I made it um, 94 pages in yesterday, so that's on chapter 17, so not a huge dent, but um, progress. I did a lot of reading yesterday, though. I did, like, read nearly a whole book. I, so far, am enjoying this. Uh, we are following a husband and wife, and it's pitched as Dexter meets Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which was really what made me pick this up. But essentially, these two, uh, this couple, um, likes to unalive people. And I think that they've done at least three at this point. But their latest victim has been discovered, her remains. Um, but there's a little bit of mystery behind the circumstances of what really happened and why is she just now being discovered? Why is she being discovered? And how is she being discovered in the way that she is? So there's definitely going to be some secrets between the couple here. Um, we've got some other storyline kind of happening um, with the husband and the wife and the wife's background. Um, but we're only so far getting the husband's perspective. So his kind of assumptions. I've got some theories and I pitched them to my husband last night on what I think it's going to be. I don't know. He had a great poker face. So I don't know if I'm on track or not. But I'm going to be reading this, um, trying to today. It's back to testing today, and so actually I have testing all day. 
Um, last time on Monday, I just had the afternoon shift, and today I have morning and afternoon shift. So I actually need to leave soon to take the little guy to daycare, uh, and then head my way into testing. Um, so I need to make a coffee, get some breakfast to take on the way, make a little lunch, and head off for my day. I uh, don't think I'll get much reading done, but if I do, I'll definitely update you guys. So talk to you in a bit. Hey guys, good afternoon. I am back. It is <clears throat> 11 o'clock in the afternoon and I'm on a quick little lunch break in between testing sessions. So grabbed some lunch and I sat in the car and did some more reading and I thought I'd update you. So right now with the Oh, not the lovely life, my lovely wife. Um, I am on chapter 28, page 153, and um, <clears throat> I'm a little worried that this is going to take a turn where I'm not going to like it. <laughs> uh, I just feel like there's a lot of story left to go, but it seems like things are kind of starting to pick up a little bit in the plot, but I'm like, it might be too soon. Is it going to be too soon? So is this ending going to be drawn out? Or are we supposed to feel like we're heading towards the climax of this book, but that's not actually it? I'm getting nervous. I'm slowly losing interest. Um, but my theories are changing. And I don't want to say what my theories are because I don't want there to be any spoilers. I will just say this. I think that there's a lot more... I think I'm overthinking this. I think there's a lot more to the wife than we're being told, but I think that our narrator, the husband, is going to be the one that has like the big secret because what's interesting is we have not been given his true name. He goes by a certain name when he's on the prowl, you know, researching, if you will, um, but he says that that's not his real name. But I don't think, unless I missed it, I don't think we've been told his real name and his wife has not referred to him by his real name or just any name. Like when, when he's talking about her or they're having a conversation, it's just very much like, like in passing type. Um, they don't really interact a lot. There's not a lot of dialogue between the two of them. This is a, very much his internal dialogue and some conversations that he's, have, that he's having with other people like his kids or he's a tennis coach at like one of those like bougie country clubs. Um, and so some of the conversations that he has with them, um, but it's a lot of internal dialogue in this book. Yeah, I'm interested to see where this goes. I'm kind of starting to lose interest a little bit, but it could just be the day in itself. Um, but I'm going to continue reading on it when I get breaks and whatnot. Um, and then maybe see if the audiobook is available because this is a, I have like a 40 minute drive home. So I could get, you know, a good chunk of the story done on my drive home later today. So I'm going to see if the library has the audiobook available um, to pick up in the car. But I do need to go back in because the next round of students should be coming soon and got to start, you know, putting them in and getting them situated and again having so much fun taking a test <sighs> this is like the bane of my existence but okay let's go ahead and go inside i'll check in with you guys later this afternoon um when i've done more reading hello good morning it is the next day <laughs> um it is thursday it's third wow it's thursday um so updates Last night, or yesterday, got home later than expected, um, and then did dinner, and I got to reading, and I finished My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. I think I'm going to give it a three. I think I'm going to give it a three. Initially, I was like two and a half, 2.5, two. But the more I think about it, there are some elements that I did like about it, and honestly, the epilogue for me brought it up, um, which is kind of like, but then in that, that same breath, I think, is it really that good if the epilogue is what made the book? You get what I'm saying? Um, so I think I'm going to settle on a three. This is definitely a domestic thriller instead of, I think, just a general thriller. There's not a lot of thrilling moments, not really until you get to about the last 
75 pages, then like the pace definitely pick in, like picks up and you're trying to kind of figure out what's happening. Um, not necessarily figure out what's happening, but what is, how is our narrator going to respond, essentially. The plot twist was predictable. I called it like in the first third of the book. Because my husband read this, I, as I was reading, I was sending him my theories and thoughts. I said, this is my theory initially, but I feel like it's going to be something different because this ending, this twist, if I'm correct, is way overdone and it's not very unique and I can see it a mile away. So I'm going to, I told him, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go with that one because I think that we're going to go somewhere different. We didn't. My husband, he's not a reader. He maybe reads like two books a year, which is fine. I'm not a gamer and he's very much into gaming. Um, but he doesn't dissect books when he reads them. So he said that he would probably give it like a three or a four um, from the books, the other fillers that he's ever read. So I think that if you're not trying to solve it, then you might enjoy it a little bit more. So three out of five stars on that one. Um, as far as reading goes, I really don't know what I want to pick up next. I think I want to grab something from my TBR so that I stay on task because next week is Way of Kings week, if not the next two weeks. <laughs> next week, I though, I really, really want to get to Way of Kings, um, maybe even starting this weekend. So I want to get through more of my TBR because I just, it's a goal. It's at this point, it's a goal. I did it in February. I failed in March and I want to get April. So I think I'm going to pick up something from my TBR, but I'm not exactly sure what yet. Um, I think I'm going to maybe post um, a poll to see like what got, what you guys think I should choose as far as my pick that matches my outfit. So I took some pictures when I still had the shirt on and put the book next to me. And so I think I'm going to post that poll, see what you guys think I should read or which one matches my outfit the most. And that would maybe be my next read. But um, I did a little bit of editing this morning, so hopefully I can get my video up tomorrow. Um, but I want to go run real quick. I want to get my nails done. So out of left field, um, I was just sitting down and I was like, you know what? I have not had my nails done in probably a year. And I want to get them done. And now that's all I can think about. That's all I've been obsessing about for the last hour and a half. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get my nails done. And I do need to run to the store because I am low on laundry detergent. So I'm going to pick up some more of that. Yeah, that's the plan. So let's go ahead, get nails done, run to Target, come home. And maybe by then I've decided what I want to read. It's a few hours later. I got my nails done. I decided to do like, you know, throwback early 2000s French tip style. This is why I could never be a beauty blogger. I think they're cute, practical, not too long. The corners are a little sharp. So I should have probably had him file those down a little bit more. I probably will file them myself just because I'm not trying to like get my kids too bad. Um, but I stopped at Target. Didn't get anything fun. I looked at the book aisle. They just didn't have anything that I was interested in picking up at the moment. There wasn't a ton of new releases or anything. Um, and it was just kind of picked over and all the same stuff that's there every time I go. Um, so I didn't get any books. But I did get something I'm excited for. Um, is a puzzle. I haven't done a puzzle in years. And I really like them. And I thought this was just gorgeous. This is my alter ego, essentially. Um, I want to be her. <laughs> But I figure I'm going to put this together and then if I like it, I might like paste it and frame it for my classroom because I'm headed back to the classroom next year. Then I stopped at the mailbox and I realized that I've got book mail. I've got book mail and book mail makes me so happy. Uh, and I already opened one of the boxes and then I was like, oh, I should put this in the vlog um, because this is just a testament to my capitalistic, materialistic, unfortunate. <laughs> Um, obsession, 
addiction, problem, issue, whatever. But I'm excited. So years ago, I used to order from Book Depository all the time because I am someone who loves cover art of books and I cover by a lot and I tend to really enjoy the UK covers versus the US covers of books. So I used to go on Book Depository a lot and order books that I was interested in so I could get the UK cover. Um, and then was it last year? I think it was last year around this time. So probably a year ago, Book Depository closed. They went down. Awful. I was so upset. But um, recently I was watching a vlog from Katie Colson and she was talking about how it was her um, Magnolia Parks reading vlog and she was talking about how she like reordered a copy of the Magnolia Parks but she got it from Blackwell's to get the UK cover because the US cover is awful. I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is but this I liked this and her vlog convinced me to read Magnolia Parks. Anyway, those came in so we have Magnolia Parks, the UK cover edition which is so chaotic um, but I absolutely love it. It is a mess. This is so unhinged but I can't stop thinking about it and looking at it. I think I might like it. Um, hopefully I do because I also ordered Daisy Hates which is just as unhinged. What like what is happening here? <laughs> But I love it so much. But I couldn't stop there. I was, I was, it was a problem. It was late night online shopping. And so I decided to also order Empire of the Vampire by J. Kristoff. Okay, this cover, in my opinion, look at that. This is so much better than this. I mean, this one, the US, isn't bad, in my opinion. But I do like this and the spine. So, I have a problem. Um, also, my book of the month box came in. I have not opened it yet. I have not opened it yet. Honestly, I don't even remember what I ordered. So we're gonna go ahead and <coughs> open it now together. And I need to hurry up because I need to pick up my daughter. Oh, I think I kind of remember. Not exactly. All right, so. So for my April pick, I went with Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I have yet to read an Abby Jimenez, but I have been hearing so much about her work. I think one of her, I think one of her, like, or truly, I think what it was, um, was like one of the, like the highest rated books last year on Goodreads. Um, and it was like a top contender for a lot of booktubers. So that made me excited because I do have that book. Um, and this is, I think, her, new, yeah. And then this one is her newer, newest release. Still don't know anything about it. Um, then, so I remember picking this one. I have yours truly, but I had not picked up, nor do I have the one that I feel like started it all, which is Part of Your World, also by Abby Jimenez. So I think between the Part of Your World, the yours truly I have on my shelves, and the Just for Summer, I think I might do like Abby Jimenez reading vlog probably sometime this summer. So be on the lookout for that. I'm set up for that. Very excited. Uh, the last thing I got in the mail, which is not book related, but I'm super excited, is Luna's Bark Box got here. So I'm going to open up her Bark Box and give her all her fun treats and toys for the month. I don't remember what the theme was. I'm terrible at subscriptions. Um, they just kind of come and I forget what I think. Oh, it's movie night. So, oh my goodness. This one was my favorite. It looks like a Blockbuster VHS, but it's Barkbuster. Um, she used to love this one, but she ripped it up. Oh my gosh, Drool Intentions. That makes me want to watch Girl Intentions. She got some popcorn, which she ripped up her popcorn pretty quickly last time, so maybe this one will last a little bit longer. So she got her two snacks for the month, um, which we are good on. We don't give her a ton, because she's on a little bit of a diet at the moment, so she's been limited on the snacks. I got her the pumpkin honey 
chew stick. You're probably like, Mariah, I don't care about your dog's treat. But listen, she's my sixth baby. I've got my four human ones. I've got my male fur baby. And I've got my female puppy, kind of. Uh, dog fur baby. So she gets all of the love as well. I would get things for Cheeto, but he is a very lazy cat that doesn't, has no interest in treats, has no interest in toys. He has an interest in sleeping and cuddling. That's about it. So Luna gets all the love. Uh, let's go ahead and give Luna her treats, and then I have to leave like now to go get my daughter. Bye. <laughs> Good morning. Okay. Yeah, you see. Okay, sit down here so we can get your shoes on. Um, it is the next day. It's Friday. Um, I don't have testing today. I did some work this morning, but now we're going to head out to run some errands. No, other foot. Um, so it is Friday, and on Fridays, my son's daycare is not open. Uh, so he's with me on Fridays, and I thought that it would be fun. Stop. So I thought it would be fun to take him to go do something because the weather in Colorado is improving. It's still cold in the mornings, but definitely starting towards the spring vibes. So ah. we're going to go to the library, and um, we're going to go look at some books. I do have some that I need to return, and then we'll look at some more, let him do some exploring and read some books. Do you want to go read some books? Do you want to go read books? Yeah. So as far as my reading goes, I let the poll stay up and it looks like for the pick that matches my outfit, I'm going to be reading Powerless by Lauren Roberts. Have no idea what this book is about. Absolutely. I, I think it might be YA. I think it's Enemies to Lovers. I don't know. That's it. That's all I know. So um, today I'm going to start reading this. I haven't picked it up yet. I'll probably start when we get back from the library while he's napping. I'll probably do some reading. Look. Yeah, there's a color book, but I need you to put the color book away so we can go to the library. All right, so he is anxious and ready to go. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hop in the car, run to the library. Do you want to wear your hat? Yeah. Yeah? Let's see. Oh, my goodness. Look at you. Uh, there we go. Look, you got your hat. Mama got her hat. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So come with us to the library and I'll check in with you later.
Hi, so it's been several hours later. Last thing I checked in with you, uh, we got up in the morning, we went to the library, got there nice and early when they first opened up. Um, my son had a great time. They actually had some new things. Um, they like changed like the theme of the children's area to like a space theme, which he really, really enjoyed. Um, and then we got home and um, ate lunch and laid a little guy down and I showered because you know, I just didn't have time in the morning and I was feeling really gross. My hair was like super just oily. Um, so I am clean and I sat down and I did some reading. Um, actually I did a lot of reading because he took a lot longer nap than what was expected. So I went ahead and started reading Powerless by Lauren Roberts. Um, and I'm enjoying this so far. I can't tell if this is YA. Um, if anything, I would say like new adult. Um, because our main character is still young, but she's not, like she's maybe 19, 20. So in the story, we're following Peyton, and in her world, um, there was like this plague that went around, and people that were infected with the plague ended up inheriting or somehow acquiring these magical powers. However, some people um, were either unaffected by this illness or they just never got any type of magical power and they're known as ordinaries. Well, the king, who was an elite, declared that all ordinaries or people without magic be exterminated. So within this, Payden is an ordinary. Um, she does not have any magical ability, but her father, who was an elite, recognized that in her very young, and he trained her to kind of be able to pose as if she was an elite, and he taught her how to read people and just be very observant, and so she pretends that she has psychic abilities, and so that's what's kind of kept her safe. On the other hand, we're also following Kai, who is the prince to this terrible king, um, and he's the younger brother, so he is not set to inherit the throne, his older brother is, so instead, Kai has been assigned the role as the future enforcer, so he has been training his entire life to recognize people with certain abilities or ordinaries without abilities and basically um, exterminate them, like take them out. 246 pages in, so it reads, that seems like a lot, but it reads really quick and there's not a ton on the page. Um, so I'm enjoying it so far. I like Peyton. She is very resourceful. She's very independent, but I really like Kai. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I love... The villain I love the bad guy but the thing is it's like he's not the villain because we are getting dual perspective so we're hearing from Peyton but we're also hearing from Kai which I absolutely love I love when we're gonna have some type of romance whether it's contemporary whether it's fantasy I don't care but if there's any type of romantic relationship in a book I want to have both perspectives because I want to know what's in both of their minds not just one person making assumptions like either give me third person or give me both perspectives. Um, so I'm really, really enjoying that. And um, I think there's a lot more to Kai than he lets on. I'm really excited to keep reading this. I'm really enjoying it. Um, this is kind of what I've been craving. I think I'm going to take a break on reading for the moment um, because it's just gonna get really chaotic in my house in the next like 30 minutes or so. So I'm gonna get my daughter an after school snack cause she just got home from school while I wait on my other ones to get home from school. And then, I don't know, we'll see. Dinner's in the crock pot so I get to relax a little bit more. So maybe, um, I don't know, I think I might like play on this switch with my daughter. I don't know. We'll see. But I'll check it with you later when I do sit down to do more reading and further thoughts.
morning, friends. So as you can probably guess, it is the next day, um, but it's been a great morning so far. Very chill, very relaxing. I'm upstairs now just getting myself kind of cleaned up out of like zombie mode, at least for the moment. So I finished Powerless last night um, and I really enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna give it a four star, surprisingly, because at some points of this book I was like, Am I done? But it really turned around for me um, towards like the last third of the book. I, th I think it kind of had like that middle portion that was kind of like a lull in the story and in the plot. The third kind of act definitely picked up and I really enjoyed that. So there's just like a couple of things that kept it from a five star for me. First of all, um, it just some points was a little bit cringy because I mean... It's YA, and so I think that just kind of sometimes kind of goes with that, that we're going to get these moments of just kind of like, wow, they just said that, you know? Um, but I was able to see past that. Um, I will say that, though. This is a fantasy romance. Do not go into it thinking that it's going to be a plot forward book. It's really not. It's really setting up, in my opinion, a fantasy romance, enemies to lovers. I think that's pretty much it. And so at the forefront is really just the fantasy romance and really behind all of that is the plot between the ordinaries, the elites, and the mundanes. So just kind of FYI on that. You're not going to get high fantasy. You're not going to get intricate plot. You're not going to get political intrigue. That's just not what this book is, but I don't think that it was trying to be that. So I'm okay with that. Um, one of the other things that for me kept it from a five star was that you can tell this was heavily influenced by the Hunger Games. But when I say that it's so much like Hunger Games, that there are so many scenes that are so reminiscent of exact scenes in The Hunger Games. Specific characters almost feel like sp other characters that were in The Hunger Games. Um, now what I will say is that it does not touch The Hunger Games. <laughs> Hayden Gray and Powerless has nothing on Katniss Everdeen. They are completely different people. They have completely different desires and motivations. I mean, Katniss is a much more in-depth character than than Payton was set up. So some of the things that I really enjoyed about the book. First of all, I really liked the dynamic between Kaden and Payton and Kai. Um, I really enjoyed Kai as a character. Um, I think I said this earlier. I just, I love a bad boy, but he's, I don't, I, there's definitely more to him. Um, we did not get a full arc for him in this book, which I appreciate that the author is taking a little more time with this character and with their, his relationship with Peyton, whatever that may be. So I really did appreciate that. And the banter was really great back and forth. There's a couple of times I just kind of like giggled like a little girl because it was so cute. Um, but there was definitely like some, there's no spice, but I feel like the author did a great job describing the interactions between them that you could like feel the tension. So I think she did a fantastic job with that. And I definitely will continue on with the series because I want to know if the plot is going to um, develop a little bit more our central conflict. So I am gonna give it a four out of five. I would recommend Powerless. So I think that this week, has been a pretty productive reading week. It was okay, like not all of them were my favorite, but I did get quite a bit of reading done, so I'm pretty proud of myself for that. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here. It is the weekend, so I'm just going to spend some time with my family and prepare for next week. Um, yeah, so if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, do all the things. Hope you're having a wonderful time out there and that your day is full of good moods and good vibes. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.